We are continuing our, our journey through the Sermon on the Mount. In a sermon that I like to call, Don't Worry About It. <laughs> I uh, was hoping, I've been, I've been asking a, a neighbor of ours to come to church for quite some time, and he always yells at me, Bless you, Pastor! I promise I'll be there this week. I'm like, I hope he doesn't show up this week because he's going to kill my my uh, my, my accident because he's actually from New York. Yeah. Yeah. So the, the title of it is "Don't Worry About It." My son said, "Dad, you misspelled about." <laughs> no, I didn't. I New York spelled it. <laughs> don't worry about it. We find ourselves worrying a lot, don't we? <clears throat> and this great visual. Um, aid that I was going to do, but I did it at home and it failed. So yeah, that's not happening. But we always worry about things. I mean, is there anybody in the house or is it just me that worries? Anybody worry about worrying? <laughs> we, we chuckle, but we think about, man, I've got like nothing to worry about now. Well, should I worry? Things are going great. What's going to go? Now we're, that's what I love when people are, oh, things are, things are going great, but I don't know how long it's going to last. I worry about it. We worry about worrying. I dug up some quotes about worries. Worries throughout this whole Bible, by the way, but I wanted to see what other famous people said. Charlie Brown said, secret to life is replacing one worry with another. <laughs> Aaron Bombeck said, worry is like a rocking chair. It gives you something to do and it moves you nowhere. Ain't that the truth? A friend of mine shared a uh, Toby Mac uh, video with me this week, and it's, uh, it was weird. I, I told him, I said, look, we're, there's an actual quote about Toby Mac in my sermon. It's already written. Worry is worshiping the problem. Ooh, there's a perspective for it. Worry is worshiping the problem. This is where the visual comes in, so I don't have that do it for you today. And I wonder how many of us worry and worship the problem. Do we spend our times worshiping the problem? And our worry is such a big part of our lives. I had a conversation with uh, Dave, Mr. David this earlier, and he said, uh, would you say that worrying and, and fear is the same? I think, I think worry is the seed to fear. I don't think I'm afraid of everything I worry about, but I, eventually if I worry about it enough, I can become afraid of it. But worry is that seed. There's almost like there's a trend that Jesus has been talking about. It's the lust is the seed to infidelity, isn't it? Anger is the seed to murder. He's attacking seeds here. If you have God's word, I trust that you do. We're going to be in Matthew 6, 25 through 34. Oh my goodness, we're not going to get run out of chapter 6. We've gone through two chapters already. Hello. We're going to invite you to stand for the reading of his word. If you don't have it, it will be up on the screen. These are all in red, letter, red letters, as my uh, late great uncle would, would, uh, would say. If it's in red, Daryl, you need to make close attention. Therefore, church say therefore. Therefore. Ooh, that's a command. I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food, the body more than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. Do they... They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they are? Can any one of you worry about it and adding a single hour to your life? And why worry about clothes? See how the flowers of the field grow? They do not labor or spend, yet I tell you, not even Solomon in all of his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field in which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, Will he not much more clothe you? Oh, you of little faith. So do not worry, saying, what shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore do not worry about tomorrow, for worry, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Let's pray. Father, we thank you so much for your word. Lord, I, I'm asking for that your spirit intervene in this moment. Soften our hearts that we may hear what your word has to say. Convict our hearts that we may change what you or uh, 
surrender what you need to change in our lives so we can be more reflective of you. Worry is something that, that takes up a lot of our time, takes up a lot of our energy, and takes up a lot of our space in our minds. So, Lord, we want to surrender that worry to you. Father, it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. You may be seated. Woo. He starts off. Therefore, I tell you. Church, say that. Therefore, I tell you. Therefore, I tell you. Oh, my goodness. I didn't hear the at-home crowd long, loud enough. Did they say that? Ellie, did you hear them say that? Therefore, I tell you. See, the first thing Jesus does here, he rebukes worry. He doesn't say, ah, you know, I know it's part of life. I know you're human and we're all going to do it. He says, stop. I'm telling you, don't do it. Is it a command? Some will say, yes, it's a command. He flat out says, do not do this. I think he, he I believe he says this in, in a compassionate way. He says, you know what, you're wasting your time. It's like me worrying Who's coming through those doors when I had absolutely no decision in that matter? How about that, pastors? See, sometimes I know that we pastors, we tend to look at, at, at people's uh, sermons after the fact because that's how we go to church, y'all. We, we get to go to church through online now more than ever. But I, I'm, I'm going to challenge those pastors that are watching. I'm in your shoes. I remember worrying how many people are going to show up. And why do we have 20 pews when we really only need three? <laughs> Pastors, why are you worrying about who's coming through those doors when you have absolutely nothing to do it? And I believe that you've read that you've read these words in, the, in your in your book because it's the sermon that we all go by as, as pastors, as leaders. Why are we worrying? He tells us not to. It's simple, don't. It has no place in our lives. Jesus invites us to come to him as if we are weary and heavy laden and, or heavy burdened, full of worry in Matthew eleven twenty eight, 28. Ye who are, you're, you're, you're downcast, you're heavy laden and you're heavy burdened through anxiety and worry. He said, come, come to me. I, I got this load. Let me take that yoke. And I want us to know that we have this promise, and I love this, I love that verse. But how often do we, with our own selfish desires, say, no, I got this. I'm a grown person. I can handle it on my own. I'm not going to call out for help. Only people like me don't call out for help. But yet he says, ye who are weary and heavy burdened, over anxiety, over anxious, over worried. Take my yoke upon you. See, he was he was talking about how when we yoke oxen together to help pull a heavier load. He says, "You might be not be strong on your own. You're right. You can't do this on your own. But come alongside me." What a promise we have that Jesus will take our worries. He'll take our anxieties. What do we generally worry about in our basic needs? Right. We worry about clothes, food, and drink. It's the first thing that goes through our mind when we lose a job. Anybody else lose a job in, in their lifetime? I have. Boy, I tell you what, it's a harsh feeling, isn't it? It's a gut-wrenching feeling, isn't it? What am I going to do? How am I going to feed my family? The first question comes to my mind. Maybe it's just me I'm talking to. First thing comes to mind, and Jesus addresses it. See, all of our worries start there. We never worry about, man, how am I going to buy that Cadillac Escalade? How am I going to take that European trip? Anybody ever worry about those things? I haven't. How am I going to worry? How am I going to provide food for my family? How am I going to make the electric bill? How am I going to keep a roof over my family? How am I going to look for a job if I can't pay for the car that, that takes me to and from work? Our basic needs. He looks at those basic needs. Yet, did we not pray for our daily bread just a chapter ago? Lord, give us our daily bread. And we talked about it then. Is we don't pray for our lifetime bread. We pray for our daily bread. We pray for our basic daily needs. 
said, if you want to know how to pray, this is how you should pray. And he teaches us how you should pray. And then he's going back to each one of those pieces throughout this sermon. Did we not just learn how to pray? Second thing is, Jesus likes to reason with, he uses reason with worry. Oh, well, wait a minute. There are, some, there are some denominations out there that say, well, I don't have to learn about, I don't have to, I can be a pastor if, he, if I'm called, I don't have to worry about developing my mind or learning anything. I just go out and do it, right? If he wants me to be a pastor, I'm going to go do it. I'm going to open up the Bible and start telling him this is, I, anybody can read these words. But see, Jesus wants us to use our minds. He wants us to, to think. Wednesday night during our Bible study, we talked about how Jesus discipled his disciples with questions. So the disciples asked a question and he didn't answer them. He gave them more questions. Why did he do that? He wants us to think. So he's using reason here. He's supporting his stance with reason. He makes an argument that we would understand. Does this in two ways. He compares the bigger picture to the smaller details. He says, look, this is your life. He compares life to food. Your body to clothes. Really didn't need clothes until after the fall, did we? Huh. I imagine, side note here, I imagine, you know, Adam and Eve in the garden as they're as they've sinned and they're they're worried. That's where the first time we actually find worry, that God will see them new. Never occurred to them that they actually needed clothes. Where did the word first worry come from? A basic need. He just finished talking about heavenly wars in which we are to understand his life. John 3.16 tells us about life everlasting, not clothes. Not Gucci. Not Levi's. Not our Cole's cash. Well, that's a little hit. We don't have Cole's cash. We don't do Cole's cash too much anymore. But Man, that was one of the things we would do during the Black Friday. And they would come home and say, yeah, look at all the Kohl's cash I earned. I'm like, oh my goodness, how much did it cost to get that? <laughs> but see, he doesn't talk about the reality of the luxuries that we want in life. We just talked about how we should strive for the heavenly reward, right? I think my mic's going out. It might be my batteries. I don't know. Maybe I should get louder and replace the battery because I think some people like me really loud. I'm just playing. I was. I'm, I'm playing with Miss Jones. She wasn't. She didn't hear me earlier. You know, we didn't see this, or we didn't see this angle of reasoning. I don't, I'm not understanding what you're saying, Jesus. Oh, Jesus, fine. I'll get. You, I'll get you from the other side. Coming. We'll go. We we just looked at the bigger picture to the smaller details. We looked at the overall the body. Does he not care about your body? He doesn't care about the stylish clothes that you wear. I wore. A, a sports coat today because we're going to be doing communion and I like to do something. It's either the tie or the sports coat. And I wanted heat instead of a chokingness, so I went with heat. Um, it's one of the two. It's okay. You don't you shush her. Don't you do it. You all hear that, family at home? Bring your babies. Love that. But if we didn't understand this angle that he was talking from the big to the small, he said, it's all right, I got you. I understand. You don't understand this way. Let me break it down to you another way. He looks at the details to the bigger pictures. He said, look, the details of the birds. Do they not get to live wonderful lives? Some of them are wonderful. I actually was, took the dogs out um, yesterday and a little fence came and hit the window and kind of got stunned and was kind of holding onto the side of the, the uh, house, one of the brick or something, and looking at me like I shouldn't be where I'm at. Um, he looked, it was weird. He just kind of looked at me and just stayed there. He didn't move. He's kind of dangling with one foot. But it, I turned around and off he flew. But the bigger, the, the smaller, the bigger picture to the smaller things, their birds are lived and they're fed by God. Flowers that have color and beauty, they had not to work for it. Boy, if it was just for beauty that Clothes make us beautiful. Well, I think the, my clothes are really disappointing me. But he said, why are we caring? Why are we worried about this? First Peter 5, 7 tells us to give it to God, for he cares for you. Ah. 
<laughs> give the big situations to them too. We can give them the small situations. We can give them the big situations. We can give them the small situations. Lord, I'm hungry. We can give them the big situations. Lord, I have no job. We can give it all to him. First Peter says, give it to God. So that's the hard part, folks. It's hard to give our problems to God. It's hard to take our anxieties and bring it on with the yoke of, of our Savior. Why? Because he cares for you. See that God that, that takes the battle? He cares for you. And I know I get excited when I get you know, some of the holiness messages, but sometimes we just need to hear that God cares for you. Friends, I want you to say that out loud, and I want you to say, God cares for it, and then say your name. God cares for Daryl. God cares for Haley. God cares for me. Amen. Sometimes we need to hear those words out loud because we forget. We forget that the battle is his. I don't know if, uh, if, if Don is doing any cheating and looking ahead in Scripture seeing where we're going to be at, but he always found, picks these, these uh, verses out or these songs out that go perfectly with the message. See, our battles usually start with worry. We worry and then we create that battle. I remember in retail, I would tell my salespeople, don't you ever start a fire to, to put it out. Wait to fire, wait till the fire comes to you before you go try to put out a fire. Don't create a fire just to put it out. That's what worry is. Worry creates the fire. Oh no, we have a fire and now we gotta put it out. Hmm. He cares for us. We forget that he's already got the battle. He's just waiting for us to give it to him. If you remember, all the creation was done for us. That's not a New Testament thing. Where yes, we're in the New Testament. Back in Genesis, it talks about how on the first day, and the second day, and the third day. See, everything that was done every single day was in preparation for us. His great, his great piece of artwork was us, you and I. See, he didn't send his son to die on a cross for the bison. He didn't send his son to die on the cross for statues or laws or sicknesses. He died for us. He didn't die on the cross for a pew or a building. He did it for us. Everything that he created was all for you. So I want us to, as a church, remember that God cares for you. Those at home, he cares for you. Yeah, you got rid of the dinosaurs, <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Absolutely, there's no benefit whatsoever to worry. There's no spiritual or physical benefit to it. Everybody, anybody ever get healthy with anxiety? <laughs> the chuckle came from the doctor in the house, ladies and gentlemen. Anxiety does not cure a sickness. Worry does not make us fit. I don't worry at all. <laughs> not a single hour, he says, can be added through the process of worrying. We are temporary, but yet we're longer than the grass of the field and the flowers of the field that are here today and gone tomorrow. The birds, don't worry. Like that worries. bird that hit that window. The bird didn't worry. It flew off. So why do we spend all this time on worrying? There's no extra credit for you teenagers that are in school for worry. And that doesn't take about does not take away the part about work, working hard. Well, pastor says I don't have to worry about it, so I can just sit at home and the job will come to me, right? Pastor says I don't have to worry about it, I sit at home, someone will bring me food. Someone will bring me clothes. See, Paul reminds us that those who do not work do not eat in 2 Thessalonians. Jesus is not saying not to work, work or work hard, but he says not to worry about it in the process. Put forth the effort. 
You know, I, I often, when I, when I first came here, it's almost two years ago now. We're almost coming up on that two-year anniversary. Can you imagine you guys have put up with me for two years? It's been tough. <laughs> it's been tough. <laughs> but I wonder, I often worry about what am I going to do? <clears throat> me and Doc, we walk the neighborhood every Thursday. Our intent is to pray over this neighborhood. Sometimes we feel led to pray over this apartment complex. Sometimes we feel led to, to pray over someone who hasn't been to church in two weeks, and on the third week we go banging on her door. Isn't that right, Miss Julia? Amen. If you live in this neighborhood and you miss two or three weeks, we're banging on your door. But see, we don't set out to fill the pews. We set out just to plant seeds. Lord, I want to meet someone new today in this community. I want them to know where I'm from. And if, you, if I feel led, I'm going to invite them to church. If I feel led, I'm going to pray with them right there, in the public, right there in public. But if they don't come to church, that's okay. But I guarantee you, this, this young man that lives across over here, he knows who I am. And I know who he is. That's my friend Marco. If Marco never comes into the church, so be it. My job is not to worry about these pews filling up. My job is to set my sights on heavenly things, to see earthly things as a full church. Oh, there's nothing that would make me happier to, to preach to a full packed out church. Me and Don had that conversation quite a few months ago. He was worried that we might split the services, and, and, and he, goes, he goes, well, we're getting really close to that 40 mark, Pastor. I don't want to split the services because it's too fun to worship with, with 40 people. I said, you're right, it is, isn't it? Nothing would make us more happy to have a full, full crowd, but I'm going to tell you, I'm not going to waste a moment worrying about it. But that's not going to keep me from going out every single Thursday, whether Doc is here or whether I'm here, Doc, I'm sure Doc will walk without me. I would encourage you all to walk this neighborhood, not yours, this one. I'm going to encourage you to come to this church, take a walk. Well, I'm not that extroverted person. Then walk with someone who's extroverted. I'm sure if you call me or Doc, we'll probably walk with you. See, we are called to serve this community. And there's a lot of folks who drive around this neighborhood when we, when we break from here. You'll see all the folks that are still in their homes. I, if people have a home church, great. But there's a lot of people that don't. And even if they don't come... I want them to know that this little brick building is filled with people that are praying for them. My favorite verse that combines worry and prayer is Philippians 4, 6 and 7. Do not be anxious about anything. <laughs> it's almost like Paul heard this before. Do not worry about a thing. That's the Daryl's version. The New York Daryl version, don't worry about it. But in every situation, with prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. With every situation, the, the, the petition part is listing everything that you want him to do. See, on Tuesdays we do that. We have a list of people, medical, spiritual, mourning, we pray over a bunch of people. Promise you that if you are watching or if you're here in person, we're probably praying for you. Most people's faces that I'm looking at are on that list right now. We don't worry. Doesn't mean that our hearts are not burdened, that we don't cry out. But see, God tells us not to worry, and then Paul takes us with his infinite wisdom and says, look, not to worry, but through prayer and listing things out. Present your requests to him. So Jesus reprioritizes, which relieves us from worrying. You see all the R's I'm doing there? I'm doing this. He did this on purpose, too. He rebukes us, rebukes us from worrying. He reasons against worry. And he reprioritizes worrying. He starts with a repeat. 
I'm really getting silly with those R's, ain't I? He repeats us. He repeats not to worry. It's almost like we have to be repeated over and over again. Parents of teenagers, have you ever had to repeat yourself? Come on, at least I thought it would be one or two amens in there. <laughs> Parents of kids that are not teenagers, you, you'll get to do that. I promise. So repeating was not, it's not just a, an act of frustration from us parents, but it was a way that Jesus used to teach. Those who have ears, let him hear. He said that multiple times. He repeated himself over and over. He tells us not to do it again. Then he reminds us, that, you know what, that only the pagans worry about that. Those are earthly treasures. What we will eat, what we will drink, what we will wear. It's not what we should worry about. We are different. See, whenever Jesus repeats himself, we need to take a notice. We need to underline. We need to highlight in our Bibles. We need to not forget that he said it. Man, I'm worried, Pastor. What did Jesus say about worrying? Twice. In the same context. He says it more in here. Promise. Read on. There's more. He says, look, unbelievers taste those things. We as believers were called to be different, to live in the world, not of the world. See, we chase heavenly treasures, his kingdom, his righteousness. Chapter 5, verse 6 tells us, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for his righteousness, for they will be filled. Do you think he used filled as food and drink? And I think he did that on purpose. Bless those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. My question to you, are you hungry for something that other than meat? A few verses later, after 5, 6, he tells those that are persecuted for his righteousness, inherit the kingdom. See, when we hunger and thirst for the right things, the heavenly things that we talked about last week, we have no worries Nothing to worry, nothing left to worry about. I'm not a poet person, I'm not a poetic person, I'm not someone who reads a lot of poetry. But I remember a poem from grade school, and I don't remember much. And it came to my, across my mind this week, and I'm like, i got to find out who said this. Elizabeth Cheney, I, I googled that, and I first got... Liz Cheney, um, the, the congressperson, that's not the right person. But Elizabeth Cheney probably lived a whole long, long time ago. I'm sure those that are well-read, I'll get talked to, I'm sure, by David after the church. <laughs> she once said, the robin and the sparrow. Said the robin to the sparrow, I should, not, I should really like to know why these ancient human beings rush and worry so. Said the sparrow to the robin, friend, I think it must be that they have no heavenly father such as cares for you and me. Hallelujah. Hmm. Hallelujah. I wonder where she got her inspiration for that, her, for that poem. See, friends, if the birds realize that they are loved, how much more are you? The birds were made for your visual enjoyment. If you have a grilled chicken, it works great on the grill too. It's for nutritional enjoyment. See, the, bird, the, the creation was for us. They have no, they, 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 it must be that they have no Heavenly Father such as cares for you and me. We have a Father that cares for us, so we don't have to worry. We do not have to worry because we have a Father that cares for us. Why are you in the pits of this battle? You, you, you've lost everything. Why aren't you worrying about it? Because I've got a father. And although I'm in this battle, it doesn't belong to me. That wasn't even in my notes because I had no idea until Friday night it was one of the songs. One father who wants us to gaze our attention to his kingdom and his righteousness do you need to be reminded that your father loves you? That your father cares for you? In the midst of the mess that we find ourselves in, Abba Father cares for you. 
He cares to take that battle. You feed that poor child. <laughs> Maybe he's giving me an amen. Church, you have a father that cares for you. Amen. You have a father that cares for you. I think a lot of times we often forget that because it's crazy. Because we don't have enough to smile about. But friends, I'm telling you right now, I'm smiling. Because I have a father that cares for me. I have a father that says, don't worry about it. I got you. Stop worrying. You present your request to me. You put in the work. You put in the effort. But I'm, I'm, the battle belongs to me. It's my battle. He says he is the author. I just get to read the book. Let's pray. Father, we thank you so much for your word. Lord, we ask that you give us the courage to give the battle to you. Instead of the worry and the anxiety that takes up our time, our energy, that increases our blood pressure, Lord, remind us that we have a Father that cares for us. Remind us that Paul said, do not worry, because you have, well, Peter said that. You have a Father that cares for you. Remind us that your words were very specific. Therefore, I tell you, do not worry. Do not be anxious. It's easier said than done, Father. Sometimes we've got to submit it to you, and I don't like letting go of things that I want to hold on to. I don't like not having control. Father, give me the strength to be able to relinquish that to you. Give me the courage to walk beside you and say, may I take your yoke upon me. Because your burden is light and mine is heavy, so. Father, we give us the, the knowledge and the wisdom to list what we need to bring to your table. Lord, we can't do, do this without you. Remind us that it's your battle. It's in Jesus' holy name. Amen and amen. For those that are watching online, if you're local, we are doing communion this week, so by all means, reach out and we'll do communion in your home. I'm going to ask someone to come place something on her. I didn't ask that earlier. <laughs> but uh, we're going to be doing communion. For those that are at home, know that I love you. I'm praying for you. And I want you to remind yourself, put it on a, on a sticky note, put it on your bathroom mirror, on your refrigerator. I have a father that cares for me. God cares for, put in your name. You got 18 people in your house, put 18 tabs on there because they all need to know. God cares for me. I love you. I'm praying for you. Until next week, have a great rest of the week. Go ahead, Al.